He was an absolutely amazing man. Probably the charity is his greatest legacy, I think, and I think that is the legacy that Doug would want to leave. And I think the great thing is he, um, he chose his um, trustees extremely well. Um, and so that the charity is still, I think, the most effective and strong charity of the many, many charities that are, are doing great work in Nepal. But Community Action Nepal is doing a wonderful job and will continue to do so. And that is, yeah, that is Doug's legacy. And it's what he's passed on. As far as his climbing achievements went, he was one of our greatest climbers. And that is another legacy which uh, will go on in the history of climbing. But I think, yes, I think the most important thing of the lot was what he did for the people of Nepal. Doug Scott, it's a real pleasure to see you here at the Heswell Festival. Hmm. Were you surprised to be asked to take part in an arts festival? Uh, no, no. We're actually putting on um, uh, a mountain arts festival at Reged, outside Penrith, the 6th, 7th, 8th of November. And uh, the um, group Isaacs Sachs and Violets are performing there. So. Um, yeah, it, was, it was good to be coming here to do a kind of dress rehearsal. Excellent. Ready for reggae. And we've got a full house for you tonight. Well, that's good. Even better. Yeah. It, it's impossible to go through all your achievements in the world of climbing. You've done so many first ascents. That's astonishing. Hmm. But w was that important to you that there were first ascents? Well, I mean, that's the kind of... Um, that's how it all started. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. And the only first ascents to do it. Yes. yes. So it's, it's the core of climbing, doing, mm. going where no one went before. And you get pushed out to the Himalaya, really. Yes. Mm. Because, um, uh, you know, the Alps has got so worked out mm. and every mm. elegant, every obvious line's been done. Mm. But um, all, all the most elegant ribs and buttresses on. On, on, the Alp, uh, on all the peaks in the Alps have been climbed. Mm. But um, apart from Everest, the Himalaya is wide open. In fact, there's still probably more peaks over um, 6,000 metres unclimbed that have been climbed. Really? Still? So plenty of Goodness. Left, much to do. Goodness. Um, Interesting reading what, that your preferences when, when, you, when you're climbing. You prefer the Alpine style. That, is that not, am I right in thinking that's sort of everything you can carry virtually and um, not, not to besiege a mountain? Well, it's a bit like um, a commando unit operating behind enemy lines. Um, just your own little group to take care of things and uh, if anything goes wrong, well, just have to rely on each other. Um, this is, um, there's no kind of uh, fixed line all, all the way down. Mm. You, you, you set off self-contained. That must be jolly hard in the Himalayas, though, surely, uh, when everything's so enormous. Well, it's a mixed thing. Um, the sea style, you're often in the firing line um, several times over as you start to stop camps and pass under areas of danger. With the Alpine style, you just pass it um, once. But then again, when you are caught out in bad weather, you've got so little um, food and equipment, so you're a bit exposed. Mm -hmm. Swings I, around that. I was surprised to, I, I don't know whether I've got this right, the one name that I didn't see in your enormous list of climbs was the Eiger. No, not, not, not climb, oh, I did climb the Eiger. Oh, you did? But not, not, not by the North Face. No, no. I went up no. the, the Mitalegia Ridge once. Because mm. yeah. mm. that's the one everyone seems to race up in a couple of hours now, oh, compared with how it yeah. used to be. No, I never tried the idea. Nor the matter. <laughs> no, no. Well, the one thing that we know you're um, associated a lot with is Community Action Nepal. Mm. So that's obviously massively important to you to keep that connection with, these, with this country. Uh, well, it's been um, useful in that respect. Um, just as my uh, you know, strengths failing, become old and feeble, I'm still a good excuse for going out there. And uh, well, we're involved with about 40 odd projects 
half of them all now flattened on the mm. 25th of uh, April. In the Have you been out there since that event? Yes, we're out there so about three weeks ago. So what is it like there now? Oh, it's um, heartbreaking. Pretty, pretty appalling and mm. see the devastation and the haunted look in the eyes of folk we've known for so long. But uh, they're all determined to get cracking and, and put it all back together. We've raised a million pounds and uh, over a million now. So we, we have the, the funds to rebuild and, and build better with future shops in mind uh, on our patch. And that's all you can do really. Um, don't think about the wider issues. Just do rebuild what we've already started. Um, it's the day-to-day -day things they need at the moment. Yeah, we've, we've put in about £65,000 worth of sort of food, medicines, tarpaulins, tents and all that, see them through the monsoon. But um, a, a lot of our time right now is taken up um, in designing schools, health posts and homes that will withstand future shocks. Mm. And we're looking at what people have done around the world. New Zealand, Christchurch, Japan, and the big earthquake in 2005 in Hunza, North Pakistan, where I think it was about 80,000 people died. 10,000 died in Nepal. And uh, so we're, we're um, examining everything that others have done, uh, putting together um, plans that have to be approved by the Nepalese government before you can get started. Um, but uh, that's, that's happening right now. Uh, we, the first thing we're going to do is rebuild uh, the hostels at a big school we built in Malemchi for 400 kids. Um, they are having, um, uh, they are being fed, accommodated and having lessons in temporary learning shelters at the moment. But uh, the, the, they've remained dry through the monsoon, but now the cold of winter is going to be a real problem. <laughs> Yes, they're not insulated those tents and uh, so we've got to uh, we want to crack on with building host the hostels that have collapsed mm -hmm. well, it's fantastic work it really is um, I know that the Himalayas were formed because of geological activity but it, Nepal wasn't the sort of place you associate with that sort of event is it you don't really hear but um, it was a surprise to so many people, I think, when it was so um, bad. It might be to you know, tourists who found it you know, so mm. idyllic. But actually mm. all the geologists have been saying for years that they expected this to happen. I mean, there was a huge one in 1934, bigger than this one. Um, but um, they, they don't think that it's the end of the story. I mean, there have been so many aftershocks. There's one about four days ago, uh, 4.8 which if it happened here, you'd It'd remember, be enormous, it, remember it? it all your life. Absolutely. Sort of so that's just another little shock for them. Uh, but uh, no, it's sort of te uh, uh, plate tectonics, you know, the sort of Indian plate moving against yes. the um, Tibetan. Well, that's why the Himalayas mass. are there in the first place. Mm, of course. Of course. Yeah. Well, the, you've got the, there are some marvellous um, Nepali um, clothes on sale here, which I'm going to go have a look at. Mm. Uh, let's just hope that um, the work carries on and they, mm. they get through this winter, because that's going to be very hard. It is. And the, the sales are important to us. Um, we, we bring them over from the pool, a lot of them made locally. Um, plus, we are able to say that all, all the donations we get go out to the pool. Our costs in Britain, our temporary staff, Ruth and Anne in Cumbria office and Denise in London uh, are, are paid from the sales of Nepalese goods and my lectures and and, and uh, other people are being to lecture for us now. So that's quite a good thing to be able to say these days when people are concerned about the big charities spending so much on admin. But uh, so far, um, all our money goes out there. And it, it and after well, having been climbing out there since you know in Asia since the 60s. Um, we have got all the checks and balances in place to make sure there's not a seepage, you know, that the, the money doesn't go astray. Good. And uh, so, as far as we know, it doesn't. But well, it's, you're doing fantastic work and mm. all power to you. Doug well, Scott, it's a real pleasure to meet yeah. you. Looking forward Good. to the evening.
Reserve judgment.